If you haven't already purchased a 3D printer, we recommend the Monoprice Maker Select 3D. It can be found in the mid $300 range, and it is one of the printers that we use to test print true tiles during development. There are two materials you can use, ABS or PLA. We recommend starting out with PLA, specifically Hatchbox Gray 1.75mm filament. It's about $25 for a 1kg spool that will last you a long time. Now your True Tiles models are STL files. Basically an STL file contains all the raw geometry data for a 3D model. But your printer doesn't print STL files, rather it prints G-code files. A G-code file contains all the geometry data from the STL, but it's been translated from 3D coordinates into actual line-by-line -line instructions for the printer. The G-code file also contains a large amount of other information, such as temperatures, layer thicknesses, infill settings, and dozens of other customizable parameters. There are many software options out there which will import an STL file and produce a G-code file for you. And we recommend Cura, which is fully functional freeware. The release notes in your True Tiles zip package include some recommended settings to use in Cura or whatever software you've chosen. Here's a comparison of the standard corner tile printed with a layer thickness of 0.1 millimeters on the left and 0.2 millimeters on the right. Look at it and decide for yourself what you prefer, and keep this in mind for later when we get to painting. Some models come in multiple parts. For these, you'll need to assemble them, and we recommend using Loctite Gel Control Super Glue. This can be found for $3 to $4. Simply apply a small amount, contact the pieces together, and hold for about 30 seconds. Here's an example, assembling the swinging log trap. We're going to use common, cheap acrylic paint that you can get from any crafting store. These tubes are around $2 or less each. Some brands to consider are Americana, Folk Art, and CraftSmart. So first, apply a solid coat of black to the entire tile. Now there's multiple ways to approach this, but here's an easy method. You can buy a package of various types of paintbrushes from the crafting store, usually for under $15. Using a brush with very soft bristles, dip it in a dark gray color, and then aggressively brush most of it off on some paper or paper towel so that the bristles are spread out with little paint left on them. And then just attack the piece chaotically. Start lightly until you get the feel for how much coverage you prefer, but allow some black to remain uncovered as you see here. Now repeat the same technique except with a lighter gray, and only apply about half the pressure that you did for the dark gray. Now take a rich brown color of some sort, and with a smaller brush, pick about two or three bricks per wall and apply it. Full coverage. After that dries, take some plain white, and with a brush that is fairly stiff bristled, dip it in the paint, wipe all of it off, and then lightly nick at the piece, gradually increasing the pressure until you see the white beginning to highlight all of the nooks and crannies. This is called dry brushing. Now you might have noticed that this final dry brush muted down your brown highlighted bricks, and if you don't like that, well then simply hold off and do those bricks as the very last step instead. Here again is the comparison, 0.1 millimeters on the left, 0.2 millimeters on the right. Depending on your skills as a painter and your personal taste, you might argue that the 0.2 millimeter version looks better. 
The details are a little bit coarser and so they do a better job of pulling out the highlights from that final dry brush. This is something of a blessing in disguise since it means a printing time of about one hour per tile instead of two hours per tile. So that should be enough to get you started. Be sure to visit Heroes Horde for more information and future products.